Throughout my summer of watching documentaries, I watched many documentaries that utilise the use of interviews and many different techniques in conveying their message. Looking at the typical codes and conventions of documentaries, one of the main things is um, expert interviews, and this was incredibly evident in Blackfish, um, and also this was particularly evident in the documentary The Great Hack, uh, which details the scandal surrounding Cambridge Analytica and the US um, 2016 election. Um, obviously, it's a it was a very uh, tricky situation and not one of which that is very easily easily explained. Um, so the using uh, expert and interviews and interviewing them for the documentary um, allows the audience to fully understand um, and engage with the um, uh, meaning of the documentary. In Blackfish, many film techniques are used. Uh, the film begins with haunting music and a dark screen while various calls to the police are being made about a trainer being eaten by one of the killer whales at SeaWorld Orlando. During the phone calls, the camera uses a cross-cutting technique between a dark screen and underwater video of a trainer and a killer whale. The documentary Voyeur had one of the most interesting ways of conveying its message. Um, Voyeur, the documentary, utilised the use of reenactments um, in recreating events that had happened. The documentary Voyeur referred to the story of the journalist Gay Talisi, who documented the story of a motel owner who uh, would spy on his guests. Seaspiracy was another documentary that used a creative way of conveying its message. Um, one important thing to note is that uh, Seaspiracy used covert recordings of um, the people that they were um, having conversations with or talking to. Um, this obviously raises um, ethical concerns and ethical considerations. Um, because uh, it appears that they bypass consent. Uh, however, it was still a interesting technique to use um, in order to get information for the documentary, um, which contrasted most documentaries because not many are willing to bypass these ethical considerations. Another important coding convention of documentaries is editing. Um, the idea that um, editing most commonly in documentaries is edited chronologically um, can be relevant in the documentary I watched called Fire in Paradise. Uh, Fire in Paradise uh, details the story of the wildfire outbreak in Butte uh, County in California. Um, the wildfire, which is commonly known or um, dubbed as Campfire, um, wreaked havoc in the Butte County. The documentary documents the story uh, chronologically with the editing um, accompanying that. So the story begins at the very beginning of the um, outbreak with callers calling in um, and obviously finishes with the effects and the um, impacts of the devastating wildfire. Um, this documentary is very good at using uh, obviously chronological editing to convey the story in order, but equally uses archive footage as a main way of um, demonstrating the events that happened. Um, the, documentary is very well rounded in the fact that it uses archive footage um, and interviews and expert interviews um, all together and creates quite a balanced documentary. Um, it's also quite good that the archive footage that is obtained by the documentaries or the documenters, um, they interview the people that um, filmed that archive footage. Um, Which, which creates continuity for the uh, documentary. Another example of a documentary that used archive footage to illustrate its meaning was the documentary Lessons from a School Shooting Notes on Dunblane, which follows the tragic school shooting of the primary school in Dunblane. Um, obviously with historical events such as that and Fire in Paradise, archive footage is genuinely a expected um, convention, coding convention of those documentaries. Um, either archive footage or reenactments are often found within those type of documentaries, especially with historical events. Um, the Notes from Don Blaine documentary um, definitely used archive footage a lot with throughout um, which allowed the audience to fully engage with the story as well as 
feel fully informed with the information they were trying to portray. In accordance with looking at the techniques used through the documentaries that I watched over summer, I think relating it to what I've been looking at now is quite important. Um, discussing how uh, the documentaries I watched, which had an average um, date of release being 2017, um, were definitely less political as the ones you would see in Eisenstein and Vertov's documentaries. Um, however, um, there is still a strong sense of um, political um, tones within these documentaries. Um, one important one that definitely demonstrates this is Life, the film, the documentary Life Overtakes Me, um, which subtly criticises the treatment of immigrants, as it suggests that um, immigrant children, or it portrays that immigrant children um, fall into coma-like states um, because of their troubled um, upbringing. Equally, Seaspiracy, um, although not necessarily um, Equally seaspiracy, although not necessarily to do with politics, um, definitely criticises the way that um, the humans are using the um, or abusing the environment. Um, actually referencing uh, seaspiracy um, due to the ethical concerns of the um, documentary. Um, some would deem the documentary is not as reliable um, equally. Uh, quickly researching um, stories associated with the documentary. Um, many people criticise the documentary as being misleading and uh, representing mis um, misleading information, uh, which would criticise the documentary as a coding convention of the documentaries are to educate people as well as entertain.